Oh, 
takes care of all of your wishes. We hope you've been nice and not naughty. Amen. If you have been nice, you might get what you what you desire. Yes. God says sometimes he'll give us the desires yeah. if we do right. Yeah. If we're obedient, yeah. he might give us the desires of our heart. Oh. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We know we're not trusting in Santa Claus. Amen. We're trusting in Jesus the Christ. Amen. Yes, Amen. It's time to worship him. Amen. Without giving. Amen. At this time, you may prepare or write down the post office box. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And direct your givings. Amen. And your resources. And the Bible and Malachi say, will a man rob God? Did he say yes? In the tithe and offering. Amen. And we know that giving is a part of our worship experience. Amen. And you might be able to do that. Amen. Don't want to rob you of your opportunity to sow in what we believe here is fertile soil. Our address is P.O. Box 250512. P.O. Box 250512. Right here in Montgomery, Alabama, 36125. Yeah. Amen. Bless the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the givers. We thank you for the gift, Lord. We ask that you would give the increase, Lord, and help us use these resources that they might be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Yeah. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 There is a word from the Lord. Yes, sir. Amen. There is a word. I, the God put it on my heart. You know, we 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 pressed our way through this tumultuous year, yeah. and, 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 and 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 we had to trust God. Yeah. Amen. And I don't think we need to lose that theme coming out of 2020 and 20, yeah. going right into 2020, 2021. We must learn. To continually trust God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So we'll stick with our theme today. We're back in the book of Matthew. Very familiar story and topic. Jesus is walking <laughs> on the water. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amen. Jesus walks on the water. A lot of people, I've heard this preached, I've heard it taught, and, and we always highlight, we of course highlight Jesus walking on the water and Peter walking on the water, but there are some other things that I want to pull out of this text to admonish to you that we must trust God. Last week we talked about the boat they were in, we talked about the water they were on, uh, we, we, we saw last week that Jesus put the disciples in a boat, a place of safety. He sent them out on still water, yep. and there came a great storm. Yes, sir. How many of you know that still water don't stay still all the time? Yep. Yep. Amen. How many of you know that if you live on this earth, if you live and you, on this earth and you live your life, you're going to have some trouble? Yeah. And you're going to have some storms in your life. Yes, sir. Well, we saw last week that as he put them out and told them that he was going to meet them on the other side, they were obedient, they did just what he said, but still found themselves in a great storm. Yeah. And then we found last week that in the fourth watch of the night, between 3 and 6 a.m., after they had been in the storm from evening through the night all the way to the fourth watch in the morning, that Jesus shows up. Yes, sir. Yep. How many of you know that Jesus shows up 
and, and, and we always say, we always hear that he's always on what? Time. We always say that Jesus is always on time. But as I looked and I surveyed and I studied and I thought and I looked through the Bible, you know what I found out? Yeah, what? A lot of times, most times, he shows up late. Yeah. Huh? Y'all better hear me. Yes, sir. Just, just, just take pain with me for a minute. Jesus shows up late. Yeah. But when he shows up, he's always on time. On time. Yes, sir. But actually, he shows up late. He showed up late to the tomb of Lazarus. He showed up late when the boys got thrown in the fiery furnace. He showed up late when Abraham had the knife over his son. Yep. And the Bible says he showed up right before the knife. Yep. Went into his son and said, look over there. There's a ram in the bush. Yeah. Jesus shows up late. Why does he show up late? We found this out. I'm just rehearsing from last week. We found out that he shows up late, first of all, for the uh, dramatic. Secondly, he shows up because he shows up with revelation. Yeah. When Jesus does something dramatic in your life, <laughs> yeah. and he's late getting there, he's coming with revelation. Yeah. And what is that revelation. That revelation that I am that I am. Yeah. I am he. The lesson, and we must be not just students uh, waiting, but we must, uh, the way we conquer the storms in our lives is we have to become students yeah. of the storm. All right. We have to position ourselves to get the lesson of the storm. And the lesson is, he is God. Yeah. You got to know, he's trying to show you who he really is. Yeah. Everything we do in life, every lesson that we're trying to learn, every storm that we have, always direct you back to him. Yes, yeah. <laughs> now we see in the 26th verse, we found that when the disciples saw him walking, he's on the water now. We're up to the point where he's on the water. They need rescuing. He saw them all the time, but he showed up late. And look how he's coming on the scene, John. Yeah. He said they were troubled. And they saw him walking on the water. Yeah, yeah. He was not walking on steel water. No, sir. He was walking on the storm. Yes, sir. Ain't that a lesson for us to know? And I imagine when he came walking, he wasn't swaying, he wasn't panicking, he was calm, the wind was blowing, the lightning was flashing, the water was turbulent, the Bible called it boisterous, and here comes Jesus just walking <laughs> on the storm. Yep. Our problem is we don't walk on the storm. We 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 we, we get in a topsy turvy and we try to fix our storms. We spend more time fixing, trying to fix our problems, than we do going to Jesus or directing ourselves to Him to learn the lesson yeah. of why we're in the storm in the first place. Well, here's Jesus walking on the sea, and they were troubled, said, "It is a spirit." That they cried out. They cried out for fear. Yeah. They thought he was a what? A ghost. They thought he was a spirit. The first mistake we make instead of trusting God is soon as you find yourself in trouble, you think there's some type of curse on you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do it. That is not the lesson. That ain't my time. It's not a curse. He told them to go. Yeah. He put them in the boat. Some storms are unavoidable. Yes, you cannot avoid all the storms in life, and when you go into a storm, don't let people make you believe. But the first thing they're going to do is you did something wrong. Yeah. 
you did something wrong. But straightway, Jesus spoke to them and knew, for they were there with their fear, knew that they were afraid, and gave them some comfort. He said, be of good cheer. Yeah. Yeah. Be not afraid. Yeah. The thing that gets us misdirected when we're in our storms, first of all, is fear. Yeah. Uh, fear. Fear gets us quickly misdirected. Fear gets us to turn to the wrong place at the wrong time yep. and do the wrong thing yep. to the wrong person. Yep. But he said, be not afraid. Yes, sir. Why? Why is it that we are so afraid? I've been talking and preaching this since March. Why is the church the most afraid of the coronavirus? Yeah, yeah. See, when you're afraid, it puts you in the what if syndrome. Yeah. Let me tell you, when I say the what if syndrome, the what if syndrome, when God gives you a directive, when God puts you in a storm, don't go to the what if syndrome. Yeah. What if I don't make it? Yeah. What if this happened? What if they laugh at me? Yeah. What if I can't do it? What if you can? What if you do? Yeah. And guess what's waiting on you on the other side? Yeah. Sometimes our heaviest burden comes before our greatest blessing. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something, what if, it goes both ways. When you start what if with fear, what if God takes care of me? What if he make a way out of no way? What if I try for myself? That's what fear do. But then Peter, and I like Peter. Peter was bold and courageous. 28 verse, and Peter answered and said, Lord, if it, and it's gay, see that if? He said, if it be thou, yeah. bid me to come on the water. And then the Lord already told him, be not afraid. It is I. Yeah. Yeah. That's the revelation right there. Yeah. If you don't get anything from the sermon, get that. Yeah. That's what he's trying to teach us in a storm. It is, I mean, that I am that I am. I am triune with the God and the Holy Ghost. I am God. I am Jehovah. I am the one. That's the lesson. The revelation don't get any bigger than that. People come to get revelations, they get prophecies. But what you want, what Jesus is coming to give you is the revelation that he is the one. Yep. We toss it up, we hear it, we say it, but it has to become a living reality in our lives that we know that Jesus Christ, in simple forms, he is God. He said, it is I, I am he. This statement echoes and identifies Jesus as Jehovah God. When he said, it is I, he was saying the same thing God was saying. He was saying, he said the same thing that he was saying when he was on the mountain with Moses. Yeah. He is Jehovah God. We have to know who he is. And when we start, what if and it's good for us to remember who he is. Uh, who he is. He's not a name. He's not a cliche. Yes. He is the living God. What else? I told you it flows in both directions. But the boldness of Peter. Yep. When he saw the main man. Yep. When he saw Jesus Christ. Peter bid it for him to come. Can I come out mm -hmm. on the water? All right. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, be, be thou, oh. bid me to come. Unto thee on the water. Yeah. Peter wants to get out on the water. Why do you think Peter is a storm? They've been in a storm all night. The boat looks like it's going to go over. 
12 in the boat, but one say, I want to get out the boat. Yeah. I want to get out the boat. Why do you think Peter wanted to get out of the boat? Very simple. Peter bid to come unto who? Bid me to come unto who? Thee. On the water. 29, yeah. watch this. And he said, and Jesus said, come. And when Peter came down out of the ship, he walked on the water, watch these last three words, to go to Jesus. Yeah. So why did he get out of the boat? To go <laughs> yeah. to Jesus. Jesus. Why did he want to go to Jesus? Because he knew who he was. Yes, sir. And when you know who he is, you ain't afraid no more. Yeah. You don't have to go crazy. You don't have to swander in anxiety. No, sir. You don't have to worry all night long yeah. when you know who he is. Yeah. When you know who he is, it's just about to wake now. Yeah. I might have to wait a spell, yeah. but I ain't worried hmm. because I know who he is. And when you try to direct all of your spirit, all of your focus on him, it's just like Peter. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go to Jesus. Yep. Yeah. Peter said, I'm going to go to Jesus. Right. And, and we got to be like Peter. We got to try God. Hmm. Jesus wanted them to try him. He yeah. wants us to try him. Yeah. So he can prove who he is. How can he prove to you who he is when you never try him? Yeah. yeah. We got to believe him for something. And Peter was believed for something very big. We know physically... Amen. We, we, we know it's impossible to walk on water. Yes, sir. But Peter believed him. And Jesus bid him to come in the 29th verse. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, the Bible tells me that Peter had his eyes fastened on Jesus and he was on his way to the Lord. And he began straightway to walk he began to walk on the water. And, and, and I like the way Jesus told him when he asked him to come. Jesus didn't give him any directions. He didn't give him a lesson, one-on-one, how to walk on water. You got to hold your arms like this. You yeah. got to talk like that. You got to make sure your weight should know. He didn't get a lesson on how to walk on water. Yeah. He just got one word directed. And that one word directed, all Jesus told him when he wanted to come to him was, come. Come. Jesus said, come. Come is a directive. Yeah. It's a simple one word <laughs> command. Come. Mm -hmm. A command is the confirmation. When Jesus gives you a command, that is the confirmation. And he put the command in me so it lets me know that he's going to enable me to do whatever it is he commanded me to do. Yeah. I'm talking about revelation and a breakthrough and trust in God now. And he told him to come. See, it's not all the way. See, Jesus comes with the dramatic. Yeah. But it's not about you being dramatic. It's about you being Obedient. It's about me being obedient to the most simple commands of God. Yeah. If you want to walk on water, you got to obey God's most simple is command. Yes, sir. If you want to walk on water, God might tell us some things like forgive. Yeah. But we have a hard time. God might tell us something like wait. One word. God might tell us sometimes, go. God might tell us, be still. Yeah. And all we have to do, if we want to walk on our storms, all we have to do is be obedient to the Lord. Yeah. yeah. When obey, we can do like Peter. And we can walk 
on water. Yeah. We can walk on our problems. Yeah. We can walk on our troubles. Yeah. We can walk on our circumstances. Yeah. We can walk on in spite of. Yeah. We can walk on yeah. because of. Yeah. Walk on because of what, preacher? We can walk on because yeah. I'm on my way yeah. to go to Jesus. Yeah. You see, when Peter got out of the boat, yeah. the Bible said he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Yeah. I like to feel like in my own life yeah. that everything I do yeah. and every command that I keep yeah. is directing me yeah. in the direction yeah. Yeah. to go to Jesus. I don't know. I don't know about you. But I don't want to live down here and go through all this hell and then be left behind because I really don't trust in trust in the Lord well Peter was on his way to Jesus not only were they walking on water they was also walking on their storms. Is there anybody here that wanna walk on your storm? Walk on your storm of confusion. Walk on your storm of lack. Walk on your storm of trouble. Jesus will help you to walk on. He'll help you to walk on. You walk on your storm. I see Peter looking at Jesus, walking on the storm. But Peter, he did something wrong. He got to looking. He heard the wind come by his ear. He heard a piece of lightning flash from the sky, and he took his eyes. Off of Jesus and put his eyes on his circumstances. Somebody was doing pretty good walking on your stone with your head. Somebody's talking about you, and then you start looking around for the circumstance. I heard. Somebody was walking on the stone and they didn't get the money that they thought they were gonna get. And they started looking at the circumstance and took their eyes off of Jesus Christ. It's not good to take your eyes off the Lord. The Bible said when Peter looked at the circumstance, and took his eyes off of Jesus. The Peter start going down. And Peter looked up when he started going down. And he said these words. Save me. Deliver me. Conquer me. And he didn't live. Jesus reached way down and pulled him up. You know what that makes you believe, James? That although he was going to Jesus, which means Jesus was over there, and he was over here, when he cried out, the Bible says immediately, he lifted him up. That means to me that he was there all the time. Somebody ought to know that he When you know who he is, you already know that when you call him, he's already there. When you need him, he's already there. When you need him by your side, crying late at night, before you call him, 
He's already there. And he'll reach way down. And he'll lift you up. And he will raise the standard in your life. And he will. He'll prove to you that he is the ever God, the everlasting Savior. I am that I am. I'm the before, I'm the middle, and I'm the ending. And the story goes as I told. When he lifted him up, he put him back in the ship. He put him back in the ship. And when he put him in the ship, the wind went down. The waves came calm. The storm peaked. And he was back in a safe place. Won't he put you in a safe place? Won't he do it? Have you ever tried it? Do you believe he's able? Trust in the Lord and he will, he will, he will. He'll strengthen your heart. I'm about to go now. I done did enough. I done got hot now. But I heard when he got in the ship, one was outside the ship. Eleven was in the ship. And here comes the revelation. When they got in the boat, they looked at Jesus and they cried and said, You are, you are, not you might be, not you ought to be. They said, the Bible said, they began to worship him. They began to praise him and said, for a truth, you are, you are. of a living God. And when we know who he is, we'll be able to stand flat footed and say, I will trust you because you are you are you are the son you are the son of God. See, that's the revelation. That's what he's trying. Peter, watch this. Peter failed the test. But he got the lesson. Jesus said, oh, ye of little faith. When he said little faith, when he said, oh, ye of little faith, he's not talking about the quantity of faith. He's talking about the quality. Our faith can, the quality of our faith can be no bigger than the revelation of, to ourselves of knowing who he is. Jesus is God. Amen. Amen. Jesus is God. There's a dream That I dream of a heavenly, heavenly home, and I know you gotta know. You can't think that I'm going some. Every, every, every day. Let me do this 
version, we're gonna get out of here. I have a father, an earthly father, waiting for me. Hey, Reverend Price! And he's gone, he's gone on up to glory. But he left me because you know what I'm going to do, why I am sending, I'm going to do that, up my timber. I don't care if it's empty, oh, I'm going to do it every day, every day. Oh, I'm